Steve, capital markets started the year with a very strong month in January. The S&P was up about 2%. Uh, generic bonds were up about 25 basis points. Credit was up about a percent and a half, and it's really hard to find anything that was actually down in the month. Uh, fair to assume that closing funds also had a good month? That's true. Closing funds were up 3.3%. Uh, certainly, it was a good month for your average fund. Uh, a big part of that was discount narrowing. The average discount narrowed 150 basis points. Uh, so now we're at an average discount of 4.8%, which is pretty close to the long-term historical average of 4.5%. Um, part of the reason why discounts narrowed so significantly in January is what investors generally call the January effect, uh, which sounds a little bit hokey, but the reality is that investors harvest tax losses in the fourth quarter, um, and that excess supply that hits the market in November and December uh, tends to cause discounts to widen. And then as that selling pressure subsides as the, as the calendar year turns, uh, discounts narrow. And so it was uh, a good seasonable, seasonal um, contribution to the return. And then just generally, as you said, um, capital markets were strong. Uh, interest in fixed income was, was, was certainly strong, uh, whether it's investment grade or high yield bonds. Really, every investment vehicle is picking up flows. And so some of that interest is, is hitting the close on fund market and that's causing discounts to narrow. And so it was really just a, an overall positive month, uh, both from a NAV and market price perspective. Steve, you mentioned the average discounts about 4.8%. That takes us uh, to where we were kind of at the end of August of last year before we saw some meaningful widening in uh, September, October, and November. So from an opportunity perspective, are we getting expensive again in your opinion, or are you still finding ways to put together attractive portfolios? I think you have to be more selective. Um, if you're looking at equities, you're probably still safe because your average equity fund, it'd be hard to own equity funds narrower than 10% discounts. And so their discounts are wide. On the fixed income side, I think you really need to be selective uh, to pick on bank loans. I mean, your average bank loan fund's trading really close to par. And I know that you're picking up some leverage and that can be advantageous, but there's just too much tail risk in that trade. And so if you want to own bank loans, I would say you're better off owning an open-end fund or a mutual fund. There's you know, a handful of names in the space that still look attractive in the bank loan sector. But that would be the type of answer where I'd say you have to be really selective there. Um, but on the, you know, if you're just talking about corporate credit, high yield bond funds, you know, the majority of those, in my view, are still cheap. You're still able to buy, you know, funds with a market cap in excess of 500 million trading at eight, nine percent discounts. And that That's really is an anomaly relative to, um, you know, strong interest in closed end funds. Usually investors buy closed end funds for yield and high yield bond funds have some of the highest yields right. in the space. And so historically they've traded at premiums, but now they're trading at, you know, five to 10 percent discounts. And I think that's a part of the market where you still need to be selective, but it's almost part of a beta trade there too. And so I see an average discount of four and a half. And when I think about constructing the portfolios, we're nowhere near four and a half because you can be selective and build a portfolio closer to 10. Um, I think there's a lot of funds in that six to 10% discount range that still look attractive. Um, but again, it's asset class specific. Um, in the fixed income market, munis continue to be relatively cheap. I think um, taxable fixed income, absent uh, bank loan funds, could still narrow quite a bit if investor interest in the asset class remains strong. How about volatility? We've talked in a couple of videos uh, previously that with a new uh, administration in office, uh, one that likes to make headlines, whether it be political or, or capital markets related, that is certainly uh, stands to reason that volatility across many asset classes, including closed in funds, might pick up a little bit. Have you seen that happen or have we kind of settled in uh, from some of the early volatility around the actual election? We've certainly settled in. Um, after the election, I'd say we had the best trading environment since 2013. Um, November, December were just tremendous. I'd say the number of ideas and the volume and really the capital that we were able to deploy was, was exciting. And I think that level of volatility um, is something that I'd like to see continue, right. that could continue if there's interest rate volatility this year. But that has certainly died down in the month of January, really coming into February. And so I think we're more so looking at a trending market where investors are happy with their portfolio, everybody's made money, discounts have narrowed, and I would argue they could narrow up quite a bit more. And so I would expect that instead of the choppiness of plus or minus 1% uh, every couple of days in close on funds, you're going to just see continued demand for the asset class, and I expect that to cause discounts to narrow. 
um, up until a point where you hit that next bout of volatility. But in the short term, which is really as far as I feel comfortable forecasting, uh, I expect volatility to remain relatively low and discounts to continue to narrow. Thanks, Steve. Look forward to seeing you next month. All right. Thanks, Alan.